Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of The O Show. Here we go. So, today we will be looking at Orient's opening two games of the season against Salford and Ebbsfleet, as well as looking ahead towards Saturday's game against Barrow. We'll also be joined by Martin Ling and James Alabi as we look at your best social media from the week as well. Let's get cracking. So, here we are in the East Stand where we will be looking at the best of your social media from the past week. And we're getting started today with at Eastwood Anthony. He's posted a picture of his brother. He says, brother seems happy with his Leighton Orient shirt delivered today in Australia. And judging by the picture, he does look pretty happy. And don't forget guys, you can still buy your home and away kits online on the Orient website and overseas delivery. So even if you're overseas, you can still grab a shirt. Next up, we've got Edinburgh Junior at Charlie Edinburgh. Justin Edinburgh's son, if you didn't know. He's posted the video of Justin going absolutely mental on the touchline at Salford on Saturday when the 88th minute equaliser was scored. Saying this is what it's all about at Leighton Orient FC. And he's done the three crazy hands emojis. Hashtag in just we trust. And we do trust you just. Great tweet there. And next we've got a pretty sensational story from at Ori Hicks 83. She's posted a picture of her in her wedding dress in a pub watching the Salford game. And she said, when you get married at 12.15 on a Saturday, but still make the first half of the opening game of the season. Hashtag up the O's, hashtag wedding day. That is pretty impressive stuff, especially considering it was a 12.30 kickoff. And we'd love to wish you a very happy marriage. How about a honeymoon to Maidstone next week? How does that sound? So. Here we are, and I am here with Leighton Orient's director of football, Martin Ling. Martin, lovely to have you with us today. Nice, Thank you for joining us. Um, nice and quickly, just to start off with, would you be able to tell everybody kind of just what your, what the role of director of football involves in your day-to-day -day business at the club? Yeah, my day-to-day -day business at the club is to, as what it says on the tin, really, director of football. So looking for that after every player at this football club, from a nine-year-old right the way to our most senior professional. Uh, making sure everything's running smoothly uh, in, in, in them departments. I go to the training ground a couple of days a week uh, just to make sure that everything's move, uh, smooth for them over there for Justin. And, you know, just to make sure that everybody is comfortable and have got everything they need if it's anything to do with football. So, it, you know, and because our owners live away from this country, yeah. There's a lot more. So are you that link there yeah. between the between the American yeah. when they're in America and what's going on in England? Yeah, the job description, you know, when I, it's director of football, but yeah. it's also because we have the owners live away. I am the link, literally, that anyone that's, that's got a problem uh, that would seem to be needed to be answered by the owners, they will come and see me. Yeah, yeah I'll either deal with it or I will deal with it by speaking to the owners if I feel we need to. So it, it, okay. it's quite an in depth in depth role. I bet. I bet. Um, so, when this episode goes out, we're obviously going to be a couple of games into the season. We had Ebbsfleet uh, last night and Salford on Saturday. What are your kind of views on them games? What did you take from them? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing over that I would say is I think the t both teams that we played will be top seven at the end of the season. They both look well drilled. and Yeah, and I think that they, you know, beforehand, they would have been in, in the bookmakers Top seven. Yeah. Uh, I feel that in both games uh, we had chances to win the games. Yeah. Uh, but I also believe that in both games the other team had periods of the game where they was on top as well. I think against Salford they had periods in the first half when they was on top, and we certainly had periods in the second half where we were the better side. So uh, you know, if you go back to the Ebbsfleet game in the draw. I thought that they were the better team first half, but we come yeah. off winning one 0 And then the second half, I felt really comfortable uh, and really thought that we took the sting out of them. And we did have some good chances. Yeah. Which forward with. It's always important. And and of course, it could have been some completely different outcomes over the last two games because we had two deflected efforts, one for us, once against us. Um, 
So both things going, it shows how tough the game really is, but yeah. how cruel it can be. Yeah, I think in and that little bit of luck, we had that little bit of luck on Saturday. Uh, we, we had a bit we, of unlock at the same. We yeah. didn't have the best luck at the same time. Quite a few goal line scrambles in the yeah. our way. But but we had you know it was, it was a clear own goal on Saturday. And yeah. Last night uh, I didn't realise there was a deflection on the shot sitting from where I was. But having a look back at the uh, video analysis footage, uh, it took a, a slight deflection off yeah. Shamling actually. And uh, come gonna have to have a word. Gonna have to have a word. No, no, no dinner for him tonight. No. And and, and, and it just wrong for Dean and. and the sad thing about the one last night, the, the, the shot was that was not going to cause Dean any trouble. No. He was going to actually go down and pick it up. But yeah, take the rough with a smooth. We've had to, you know, look at it in the positive and say, well, I'm beating, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll look at it in the negative, we haven't won a game yet. True. And it all depends what, what, uh, what type of person you are. I'd rather look at it that, that we had, we've not been beat yet, played yeah. two good sides. And, we've been pretty and, solid defensively as well. Yeah, yeah. we've had two goals in, and, and say against two of the top teams in this league. Yeah. Or, or that will be the top teams in this league, in my opinion. And uh, so, touch on James Alabi there. We actually met up with him at the ground earlier today and asked him a few questions that you put to him on Twitter. So let's go and have a look at that now. So, Doug, let's look straight at the camera. Here. <laughs> My favourite footballer growing up, DDA Drogba. Why? Just, I'd like to think there's some similarities um, in my game to his, and just how he used to score goals and use his power, his strength, and his pace, and his leadership skills to, to get through the team and his one. And he's from the same country as me as well, so it's a big factor. I'm from Peckham, South East London. Pad Thai. Pad Thai. Yeah, Thai food, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is, I'm actually shocked that they know that name. How the hell do they know that name? Oh my gosh. Means nothing today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not a Yoruba prince but um yeah that's that's my middle name, yeah. I don't know how they know that. That's that's crazy. <laughs> um I don't know, you just I just screw it and then when I go to the barbers I just make sure he shapes it up so uh, credit to my barber, that's to my barber, not me. Um, just the, the size of the club, um, what they've done in the history of the club and, and the fan base. I remember playing here last season and like the, the fans were really the 12th man and helped them get through the game. Some top stuff from James there, thank you very much for your questions and don't forget to keep your eyes peeled on the social medias throughout the week where we'll hopefully be having some more news about the future episodes. Um, now Martin, we've got a new feature that we're going to be looking to roll out throughout the season for all of our guests. I've got a series of 10 questions here about your career, okay. which I'm going to put to you, and we're going to see how many you can get out of 10, and whoever's got the most points at the end of the season is the winner. Okay. Are you good to go? I'm ready. Right. So, starting off, who did you make your Orient debut against? <laughs> I haven't got a clue. <laughs> uh, Rochdale. Wrong, it was Scumfolk in August 1996. And that leads on to question number two. What was the score? Can you remember? Yeah, with a laugh. Come yeah. August 96, 96, it was a good year. <laughs> was it home or away? It was away, I believe. Oh no, it's home. It's home, sorry. Yeah, it's it's home. We won the game 2 0. We lost 1 0. <laughs> so no far, none so far. Uh, question number three. How many games did it take you to score your first goal? For Orient? For Orient. Four. I would say... It's a lot, I'll give you a hint, yeah, it's a lot. it was towards the end of that season, I'd say about 40. 43, yeah, I think we can I give you the point for that. I will give you the point for that. 43 games it took you to score your first goal. So that's good going there, one point. Um, question number four. How many games did you play for the O's? Uh, yeah. I would say one five six. 
148. It's 104. Yeah, getting close again. Oh, I don't think you'll get a point for that one. Um, great. Question number five. Who did your under-19 team beat in the FA Alliance Cup final at the Millennium Stadium? They beat Bradford 1-0. That is correct. That's two points for you. Now, this is a tough one again. Els is Elliot's not a uh, big kind of here. How many days were you the manager of Lake Norrin? And that is days. Wow. That's not seasons, that's not games, that's how many days? I would say uh, 1,670. 19. 140, unfortunately. There must be a statue around here now of me, surely. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> um, how many goals did top scorer Gary Alexander score in 2005 to 2006 promotion winning season? Uh, 18. 14 goals. It's not many goals for a promotion winning side. No, then. Well, was he the top scorer? He was the top scorer. We shared them about. <laughs> Um, question, the next question, I forgot what number we're on, that doesn't matter. How many goals did you score for Exeter City? 32. 14. 14. <laughs> oh, we need to get some revision in on your career, Martin. Right, in what year did you make your Swindon Town debut? I'm hoping Elliot realises that I played for Swindon twice. Uh, and he may have the wrong answer here, so I'm Okay, well, there's two answers. We'll have your first and your second debut. Go on. My first debut would have been in uh, 1986, 87 season. And the second debut? Second debut would have been... This would be embarrassing if we Yeah, the second debut would have been in the... 91, 92 season. 91 was your second debut for yeah. something according to Wikipedia. Um, question number 10 then. I'm hoping you get this one. How many points did you win in the 05-06 season to gain promotion? See, you should know things like You should know things like this. You should. Know you should. Like this. I wouldn't even but know. this is a big time in your life. Uh, it would be in the 80s. It was in the 80s. 6. 81. 81, 81 points. Oh, so I think you've got two points oh, there, yeah. Martin. Uh, That's um, Elliot's. What a bad bunch of questions. <laughs> right? Half mine, half Elliot's. We'll okay. take the rest. Take it. Thank you for joining us today, no Martin. Um, yeah, and we look forward to hopefully getting getting you in on the show in the future episodes as well. Enjoyed it, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Cheers. Thank you very much. So a little quick update on this year's season ticket sales. We are 140 away from 4,000 with 3,860 sold. And at Joe Pavitt said that if we could hit 4,000, he will personally scrub every single seat in this West Stand, including the gallery and the dugout. So let's get buying and hopefully we can get these seats sparkling. So, that brings an end to the second episode of The O Show, and don't forget to send us your views and your thoughts after the Barra game on Saturday, when hopefully Orient can pick up their first win of the season. Make sure you tune in same time next week. Up the O's.